It is podcasting time. That means Colin Thomas is here from We Will Fix It and Essential Maintenance Dubai. It's the DIY podcast, and we have got you covered for the summer. <laughs> it's because it's time to start thinking about this stuff. It was three months ago, James. <laughs> Everyone's late. <laughs> this is this is AC air conditioning time of year. This is all of those little things that have washers in them that were starting to degrade. They're going. Leaks are starting to happen. It's crazy time. You're so much more positive than I am, you know. <laughs> I'm like the horse is already bolted. Yeah, you're at lasso time now. <laughs> Do you think it's too late for some people? I mean, uh, this is the but and this is the crazy thing because anyone who listens to this podcast is getting the inside scoop on maintenance and getting things sorted in your property. And that inside scoop is four months ago was the time to get your AC checked and cleaned, get your ducts checked and cleaned, get your water stuff sorted because prices were better. It's oh yeah, they are. And now it is... Yeah, we're, we're rammed. Everyone's <laughs> rammed. Anyone prices, who's any good... Prices have just gone... Yeah. yeah. And also, we're so rammed that it made sense to start our new Wheel Fix It Express service, yeah. which is for people who literally cannot wait because of the situation. So then, there's a premium. Then we have a, an express service. Well, you know, the premium's only 100 dirhams, to be fair. Okay, so that's... And, um, and again, as always with all of the jobs that we do, if we diagnose something and people decide to get it repaired with us, then we'll refund that diagnosis cost. Nice. Yeah, so it works well. But the, the nice thing with the, the new We Will Fix It Express service is we will get to you within four hours. Huh. And um, so there are a few caveats to that. If you call us at five to six, <laughs> and no, it'll be the next day. So it's working, working hours, but it's going really well. Oh, and, um, and a good new, new um, project for us. Because it, it's, it's more difficult than it sounds. Oh, you'll get to us within four hours. Well done, you. Well, no, actually, the logistics of making that happen yeah. when you're really busy anyway is, is quite something. But mm -hmm. it, it seemed um, we, were, we were at the stage where there were lots of people who simply would not wait. Mm. And we didn't want to uh, to lose those guys anymore, so it made sense. You know, it's quite similar to um, Amazon Prime, isn't it? Right. Pay and a little bit more, get things a little faster. Yeah. Same day delivery and all that kind of stuff. So that was where the idea, the nugget came from. It's kind of like, we will fix it, Prime. Yeah. But then the thing is, traditionally, w what we've always said, and it's totally true, which is if an AC company can come to you in the middle of summer on the same day, you don't want them in your house. <laughs> because it is the absolute peak season and we're all really busy. Yeah. So the idea of this was just to mitigate um, that and, and it, it's going very well. So here's the thing that I'm starting to think about, and I think a lot of people here in the Middle East are starting to think about, especially if they're expats, mm. they're starting to think... It's time to go on vacation. Yeah. Which means if I don't have someone living in my house, if I don't have a maid, if I don't have a, a, you know, a, a home sitter coming in, I'm going to be leaving my property. I'll leave your kids. Go do a whole home alone <laughs> Yeah. <thing. laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, son. You're nine now. You'll be fine. I'll see you in a couple of months. <laughs> don't laugh. I'm sure there's people who think about that. Oh, God, don't. It's not nuts. <laughs> but it means, you, it means you're going to be going on vacation. You're going to be bolting up the old palace. And yeah. the potential for things to go wrong are great. And so yes, I wanted to, it is. I wanted to talk a little bit in this podcast about things to think about as you're getting ready to go on vacation, things to be thinking about. And this, you know, while it applies to the Middle East, I think it applies everywhere. Yeah. Is just getting your home empty ready. Yes. You know, I've read um, there's, there's plenty of maintenance companies like ours that do these kind of articles with the, with the press and whatever, and we've done them in the past as well. And um, what makes me laugh the most is the fact that all of these, when you read them, are totally idealistic. Okay? <laughs> the good news is everybody, when they follow our, our article, um, will have infinite resources, doesn't mind paying an enormous DWA bill, and obviously has waiting staff to be able to come in at every moment. Now, I don't know about you, James, but that isn't my life. No, I don't have the infinite resources. I have no one hanging around. Although, on, in the past, many years ago, we did have house sitters oh. come and stay, which was great. Yes, I bet. I mean, it meant my AC costs went up a little bit. Of course. But they did catch things, you know, if a toilet was malfunctioning yep. or a water tank. Oh, but they caught it because everything was being used. Yeah. But, they, you know, AC started to leak. They caught all those things, which was great. Yeah. But now I'm in a position I don't have that. 
No, and the same, neither do I. Yeah, and, and 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 sometimes people look at me when I say, oh, "I don't have anyone at the house," and they kind of go, "How can that be?" Actually, come to think about it, I kind of do, don't I? Because Marilyn, my mother-in-law, which mm-hmm. we we're just talking about, the most wonderful mother-in-law in the uh, in the world, and I genuinely mean that. <laughs> I've aged out. <laughs> I'm the one. I got the great mother-in-law. Um, is normally will move in. Come to think about it, so so she stays away, over the summer. Uh, she stays over the summer, but also because, um, especially Rolo, she um, she is his favourite human. Okay. I mean, it's ridiculous, isn't it? We look after him. We love him to pieces. He gets incredibly loved. Yeah, his favourite person is my mother-in-law. <laughs> I find that just quite... Mind you, she does... The, her one major fault is that she just feeds. She is a doggy feeder. <laughs> non-stop. We come back and they both look like the Michelin men, you know? It's insane. But, so that's probably just the reason, right. to be fair. Well, at least I hope it is. It better not be anything more emotional. <laughs> and, um, but as a result, she moves in when we're away. Okay, and, so you, um, you basically have all, a house in okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So actually thinking about it, it kind of works. Yeah, yeah. That's for really us. But then, you know, we're lucky in that respect. Very few people have um, family in. And fair enough, some people have maids. But it's an obvious time if you're going away that you'd, uh, right. the maid would go on holiday at the Give same time. Give them a vacation. Yeah. Perfect time for them to go see family and, and come back refreshed and ready to go. Yeah, so you have that same kind of issue yeah. that most people do. So the big issue that most people face is, one, they don't have infinite resources. Yeah. Two, they don't typically have someone who can come and step in, friends or whatever, because most people go away. Yes. Which means they are opening themselves up to potential catastrophe. Yes, they are. Now, so we're going to talk through budget options as okay. well. And the best from a practical perspective, which we very different to the Collegiate Times article <laughs> that, we, um, uh, that we just read here. But totally consistent, actually. I've been consistent yeah. over the okay. years. And also, I've practiced this myself, so I know okay. it works. Okay, so is the We Will Fix It Essential Maintenance Summer Guide coming out? No, not this year. I'm too busy. Okay. Literally, with the Express and all the other customers, I haven't got time to write it. So, so this so, is it. So you know what we're going to do? And, and I will do this directly after the show, is I will transcribe the show and I will send it to you guys so that if, if someone there really wants That's to get, get on the game, they're going to have the, the text. It will go over to Lucy, our marketing manager, and away okay. she goes. All right. But it also means I've got to be good in this section. So I've got to try and hit 13 <laughs> minutes and no waffle, which has never yeah, happened. You know what? You, you can go the complete hour of this podcast if you want. No, no, <laughs> Lucy will kill me. If she's got to edit it down, then she will absolutely kill me. Right, are you ready, James? Yes. Do you have to hit me on a marker? Yeah, okay, I'll do that. Right, so this is the guide to summer. Mm-hmm. Now, the start point, I think, has to be AC. That's the one that people think about, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, for AC, there's a simple scenario, which is if you have no plants... And also, if you have nothing that you are particularly worried about within your property, then leave the AC off. Hold on a second. Yep. Leave going, the AC off. You're going wild and crazy here. Now, what I would do instead, what you need is circulation. Yeah. We've talked about circulation yeah, all the yeah. time. So the standard scenario would be, and this is, a, is an unusual scenario that I'm stating here because you don't really have that much that you're particularly worried about. Lots of caveats. So first of all, all doors leave open because you want circulation. We're also relying on convection currents as well. Uh So the difference in temperature that will naturally happen as your house heats up moves air around the property. To aid that, I would turn on extractor fans, but not all of them. Uh, I would do upstairs, I would do one, and downstairs, I would do one. And the idea is to aid that circulation as it moves around. Uh People get really worried about mold. Absolutely. It gets and, humid. Yeah, and they're right to do that. So I would still add in some caveats, which is if you're going away in the really high humidity months, so that would be in September or late September, October, isn't it, when it normally hits around mm-hmm. that period. Mm-hmm. And then also as we go into the summer, which we've kind of just had, and actually, oddly enough, it wasn't that humid this year. No, not yet. But, but I think there's this, still time to come. The this su- kind of period. So we're uh, we're currently in June. So the kind of May to June period is traditionally where uh, that humidity would come in. Then I would not go without AC. If you're in the solid part of summer where it's generally quite dry, then at that point you have that as a possibility. Okay, so just keep on, keep some circulation happening, keep all the doors exactly. open. It's yeah. going to get warm, but it's not going to get moist. And I know people will, um, will get this anyway, but let's yeah. be clear. When we say keep the doors open, we do not mean exterior doors in any shape or form. Yes. It's only interior doors. Would you keep the closet doors open? 
Uh, I would if I, there were clothes in there, because again, yeah. you're looking for circulation as you go. So it'll look like your house is sli- slightly <laughs> ransacked. Oh, that's a very organised ransacking. They haven't actually taken anything out of my covers. Um, but that's the way that, that, that I would handle it in that situation. Again, a few other caveats. I wouldn't be uh, doing that if I was going for longer than a month on the whole. And also, if you didn't have anybody to come in, then that would be what I would do. But okay. obviously, in that situation, if you have plants, it's too hot for them. They will die. Mm. So think about that in terms of the practicalities. And again... Silly things that people don't think about. Fish was a classic. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I know, I know that scenario that oh, has no. happened, okay. which is awful. Um, but think about those, those, the practicalities yeah. of what you've got. Okay, now. now so that's no AC, keep stuff open, yeah. and away we go. Okay, a normal scenario, um, which is, no, I've got plants in the house, and I need something that is practical, which is not going to kill my DWA bill, but at the same time uh, gives me a modicum of, um, of control. So, first of all, unless you have somebody coming in every few days, then your plants are an issue. Right. So, try and get them to neighbours if you can, mm. because it, otherwise you, they're going to die anyway if, yeah. you, uh, if they don't get <laughs> them through. So, let's assume that the plants are now out of the way. At that point, I would turn on one AC within the property. Which one? Upstairs. If you imagine, because... Uh, and you can choose which upstairs you have, and we'll talk about the scenarios with that. The reason that you use upstairs is obviously cold air is denser than mm. hot air. Mm-hmm. So therefore, if you do an upstairs one, it w- should come out, go down the landing, that cool air, and then create that convection current rotation that uh, we're talking okay, about. Yeah. Okay. If you do one downstairs, it won't have the same effect. There'll be a minimal effect in terms of, of, of what it does. Do you need more than one AC? Yes, in an ideal world, you do. However, we are talking DWA bills here, and also reliability. So, how could your AC fail? Well, in all the ways that it could fail during the summer while you're here. So, therefore, that Mm, AC that you pick needs to A, be one that, if you've got a history in the house, you know it's been pretty reliable. Secondly, without a doubt, it needs to have been recently serviced and by somebody who knows what they're doing. Okay, so right. that way, if there are any issues that they can uh, they can foresee with that unit and tell them you plan to leave it on over the summer while you're away, then in which case they certainly need to uh, to do that as well. Thirdly, temperature that you put it on at, you don't need it to be ridiculously low. So I would personally put it on at around 27, somewhere around there. Mm. So it's doing its job, and at 27 is the only one in the house, it will be still working quite hard. Yeah. But it, what it will do is it will take out the extremes of temperature, and at the same time, it will still be helping that rotation around the house as you go. Would you leave the fan on on that unit or have it on auto? Uh, I would leave the fan on if that's an option. I mean, on mine, they're, they're, they're pretty much um, uh, on permanently. But um, again, if that is an option, I would definitely leave that fan on, okay. without a doubt. Now, you've also got a plan for risk. So okay. in this situation, what are your risks? Number one, that the AC fails, uh-huh. and those failures could either be a, um, a a cooling failure or alternatively a water leak. So what happens, you need to know where the indoor unit is, which is normally within a bathroom, uh-huh. and you need to plan for how do I minimize the effects of if there was a leak here in this situation. So the first thing that you would do is if you've got a floor drain, leave the cover off so that uh, way okay. if it were to leak and through yeah. the ceiling it goes into the floor drain if you have particularly fancy ceiling tiles it might be an idea to um to take off the ceiling tiles above that ac unit uh, okay so that way they're not going to be spoiled if it does leak yeah that's a good idea thirdly have a look at your bathroom and see whether or not um you have a a, a lip going uh, going out the threshold going to the bedroom that it's attached to or, or wherever else it's going. If you imagine if water... A sill. They call that a sill. Uh, yeah, no? there's, there's uh-huh. sill. Well, sill normally you'd use uh, on windows. Uh, I think okay. threshold actually is the, the, okay. the normal that you'd use. But I don't know whether you can only use that at an entrance to a house rather than to a room. Yeah. Well, I, well, I, don't mind, I don't mind all have that. They all have a threshold. Yeah. yeah. Those Raised. are really useful because it will keep water in the right location. Um, uh, it, when it hits the floor, yeah. it's actually got to find <laughs> that floor drain. So it's going to take a little bit of depth to be able to do that. Yeah. Think about the implications of it if you flood that room. For instance, do you have a, like we have in ours, I've never understood why this is the missus, and we have an additional kind of cheapo Ikea um, chest of drawers, Uh, which um, is for storage of, actually, to be fair, it's storage of mostly my stuff. (laughs) 
thinking about it. Yeah, okay, now this is all me. I buy Listerine like 10, 10 at a time and toothpaste 10 packs at a time because I can't be bothered doing it more often. So if I'm buying it, I'm buying it in bulk. So yeah, okay, that's more. That's yeah. all me. Oh, oh, yeah. Apologies. <laughs> yeah, Natalie For got an apology. First time, so, the first time in my life. This, this has to be like played over and over again. <laughs> She's going to go, finally, finally. <laughs> yeah, okay. Mind you thinking about it. Okay, now I've got two out of three draws. Yeah, no, it's it's, it's, it's your, it is yeah, it's all you. Yeah, yeah. guilty. Mm. She's got yeah, she's got another <laughs> wall mounted unit, totally separate. So yeah. thinking about that, so in my case, I'm like, oh, you know what? I cost 150 dirhams. If it dies, it yeah, dies. Yeah, I'm really yeah, not that yeah. bothered. I can grab another one. But if you've got something that's a little bit more important to you, that if there was a water uh, water in that room, um, then again, I would uh, move that out of the room and well away think about rugs and all that mm, kind of thing mm. as well and the effect that that can cause yeah. so acs now the other thing with that is if you had the option of somebody coming in once a week for five minutes yeah. take it without a doubt because okay. at that point and also think about your ac provider and uh, who you would call in that situation so leave, leave that list for people absolutely yeah, yeah. or if you're contactable and um, you can maybe you can do it yourself from, from abroad yeah. ha- have your list with you if you're yeah. if you because most people i mean these days roaming someone calls you i mean you can we can all we can all eat a call from someone who's come to our house and yes says, you know they're gonna it's gonna be two minutes yeah we got a problem okay i'll call someone yep can i can i rely on you to be there at xyz time yep okay i'll call you back well you can if it's an express service <laughs> yeah exactly yeah, there we go well what's app yeah okay yeah. there we go uh so next one so that's acs mm. oh oh sorry we didn't talk about the infinite um infinite resources scenario which yeah, okay is- so we've we've so we've talked about turning everything off yes we've talked about keeping one unit on yep and and in my case i can turn on and off the old lennox system i can turn on and off my i've got an auto fan or i've got keep fan on so nice. keep, keep the fan on Cool. Also, um, I've got two units in our house, which I know a lot of people will um, will have now, which is the smart thermostats. Uh, mine are Eco B. There's okay. Nest as well, which is the other yeah. main one. And wherever you are in the world, you can still control your AC. That's nice. So, yeah, you have an option of, of being able to do that. Um, so depending on temperature, mm. you can either set it up on an auto or alternatively yeah. you can do it manually if you need to. Nice. It is. It's useful. Um, so, and, and you know what? Natalie sometimes has sent me a message <laughs> saying, can you just turn the ACs down a bit? I'm like, I'm in London, <laughs> and it's 3 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> and she had some reason. I can't remember why I needed to do it. She was, she was out or something. I can't remember. Nana's too cold. <laughs> something like that. Anyway, uh, uh, so, and then the infinite resources scenario. Okay, yeah. so infinite resources. Uh, yes, you would leave all the ACs on because that will have more of a dehumidifying effect. Mm. Um, you would have no issues in terms of temperatures with the house. Um, but in that situation, you've probably got a whole army of drivers and maids that would be in there right. to do all this for you anyway. So it's all sorted. Yes, and that was the scenario that was discussed by the Cleveland <laughs> Times. Very, very practical. <laughs> well done, you. Yeah. Now, I, uh, as a side to this, I know that you and Dan sometimes see air conditioning slightly different. We've got a whole we podcast do. where you talked about the office and, and the leave the AC on at night high versus don't leave it on at all. What's Dan's take on summer leaving AC? Is he is he following your uh, play card? Uh, well, he has a maid. So oh, on that uh, basis... He's got no issues then. Yeah, he's, he's kind of dealt with that way. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, it's a simple scenario on this one, as ever. Um, which is one of us is right and one of us is wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I'll leave that to everybody else to work out. <laughs> well, okay. Toilets and water. Yes. That's the next big one. We, if you listen to the last podcast, we talked all about hot water tanks, my hot water tank failure. Yep. That hot water tank failure could happen to anyone. It was a hose. Yes. And you, we've had a story that we've had in previous podcasts where you had some folks who went away there was a hose break, and it destroyed their villa. It was half a million. Yeah, to put right. You guys had to go in with hazmat suits. J- Jumeirah Islands. It was absolutely unbelievable. The I mean, only, the I've only, never seen a house like that before or since. The only notification was the neighbors saw water coming down the driveway. Yeah, it hit the end of the driveway, <laughs> and it was a long driveway as <laughs> yeah. well. Yeah. Um, so for water, I think there are two different um, elements that you need to look at. So the first one um, is uh, to turn off your pump. And what this is, is the isolator which is on the wall. If you follow the uh, the cable, the power cable that supplies your water pump, mm. it will then end up an isolator on a wall. And all an isolator is is a big switch. Yeah. Okay. On that, turn it to off. 
Done. That's the first bit. Okay. The second bit of that is to depressurize the system. So to mm. depressurize it, once you've done it, turn on a tap is usually the easiest one and wait for the water to end up at a dribble. Okay, so that way you've depressurized it. And what that means is that the water heaters especially are no longer under pressure, as is all the pipe work, which means that they're under less stress. So simple as that. Now, the third one that I would do, which is imagine that you had a leak in your tank. So either that um, you have a float valve that has failed or something else that's going on. You do not want any more than, worst case scenario, one tank's worth to be lost. So in that situation, most people know where their dewa meter is, and but right by their dewa meter, they will find a gate valve. A gate valve is just a, a, a tap which normally has a red round um, uh, top to it that you need to turn to isolate it. Isolate your water that way. So in that situation, mm. you then are in, in a scenario whereby it doesn't really matter what happens within that property. First of all, it's depressurized. Secondly, you don't have an, an ongoing flow of water into the property. Nice. So at that point, you are pretty much safe from a water perspective. If you have irrigation, you don't want to be turning off that water, though. Okay. So in the, you then, you're absolutely <laughs> right. You do have a, a, an issue in that respect. So if you had an irrigation, what you do at that point is you do stage one. So you would literally turn off the house pump because most people have, A, a separate irrigation tank and sep- right. a, a, separate irrigation, um, a separate irrigation pump. Now, key feature here is, did they use the same isolator for the house pump as they did for the irrigation? Oh, that's a good question. If they did, that is a real shame. And in that situation, you've got more of an issue and it gets a little bit more complex to isolate it. Mm. So in that situation, both pumps need to be left on. Okay. Okay. For the house pump, however, you will still be able to isolate it. And the way you do that is the way water goes through a house pump is it goes in the end and out the top through the pressure kit. Mm. Okay. So you, the pressure kit is normally either the trumpet that sits on the top of it, or if you've got a pressure tank, it's like a, um, a 50 litre, 60 litre normally uh, that sits on top of the, um, on top of the pump before it goes off to the house. So when you follow that pipe that comes out the top of the pump, it goes through the pressure kit, you will then normally find a gate valve, which Ah, is on what we call on the supply side, which you can then close at that point. So the pump is still technically on, so irrigation would still work, but you've isolated it from the house. What a good idea. Yeah. So that way you can still isolate the house pump separate from the irrigation pump. Very good idea. Ta-da! You now have a safe property. Now, I like to turn off my valves in each room yeah is that overkill or is should i you know do should i even be doing that i don't think you need to if you've isolated okay. the pump the way that we've described it is slight overkill um however the one big benefit of that is if you imagine you still have gravity um which is there and water is in your entire system still so were you to have a failure downstairs over time Basically, the whole system would drain down to that level. Mm. Um, so that way, you would have a volume of water that, that still leaks out. So yes, it has an element of benefit, but it also has risk as well. Okay. These gate valves haven't been used too often. Yeah, as I had that issue. Yeah, <laughs> and as a result, when you do mm-hmm. turn them, there are two scenarios. Either they might be stuck, or alternatively, uh, they might just uh, rotate because they've broken the spindle within them. And then you've actually got a bigger problem than you had before. Yeah. Especially as as you're just getting ready to leave. Yeah. (laughs) Perfect timing. (laughs) Awesome. The flight's in two hours. Yeah. And I was supposed to be there 15 minutes ago. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, there's benefits to it, but there's also risk as well. All right. So I got to go check that when I go home. (laughs) Yeah. Um, So we've done uh, kind of those two elements. Other things to think about. Uh, which are curtains. Yeah. So, yeah, close curtains make sense, uh, but uh, you want to be in a safe neighbourhood and make sure there's no no issues from, from that perspective. But again, what you're trying to do is to minimise the amount of uh, heat that is physically coming into yeah. your property. That's amazing. When I close, you know, we have we do have curtains that typically are open. Yeah. You know, it's gated Our where we live. Our, our villa's got a wall around it, so it's not like I have to worry about people looking in. But as soon as I close those curtains, wow. Changes everything. Yeah, it does. The other thing that we're, I'm seeing more and more of in Dubai is um, those steel shutters. Oh yeah, those but are I, a great idea. Yeah, but they, you know, they're they're, they're massive in Spain. Yeah, and um, and, and in France too. A lot France of well. yeah, okay. a lot of places. 
They, you, you'll go, especially south of France. Yeah. You know, you'll go down to Nice, go down to Cannes, and, and these are very popular. Maybe it's because a lot of people have, you know, vacation places, but you just put down this, put down these screens, no one's coming in. Yeah, but those steel shutters are really <laughs> ugly, aren't they? Yes. I mean, for me, I don't know whether it's a British perspective, but those used to be put down in rough areas over uh, over businesses and we just uh, yeah, Exactly. We just have them over stores and yeah. things. You don't have them at a house. But I, I get why people would do it. There's a few around my neighbourhood already. Really? And I'm, I'm kind of like, I get, I get the efficiency side of it, but my God, they look awful. Yeah. It's like so Fort Knox. It's, a, it's, creating a, it's creating quite the penitentiary look. Yes. I've, I've really got is. a house right around the corner from me, and I, I was walking the dog this morning, and this place has been there forever. So as long as I've lived in the neighborhood, this place has been there. And I never noticed the bars on the windows. Bars <laughs> on the windows. I was looking today and I'm going, those aren't just bars. That, I mean, that looks like, that really looks like a prison. And it's every window. We're talking second floor that you would need a good extension ladder to get over the wall and then get up. And I just thought, who lives in there? <laughs> it's, it's like, I definitely do not want to meet them. I'm going to send you a photo. It is. God, it is nuts, isn't it? Yeah, I know. It's crazy. It really is crazy. And then there's the haunted house. <laughs> oh, you live in a wonderful place. You did. So <laughs> I, as, as it turns out, there's a, there's a home. And I, I, speaking of water, and this is why, what has brought mm. this up, is no one has lived in this house for years. Blimey. Years. Looking at this place. And the story is, because I got the story, because I posted a picture of it, calling it the haunted house. And I got a, a note. I said, oh, that's where my grandfather used to live. I live there. How and I was dare like, Whoa. <laughs> And the reason I posted the photo is because the windows were open the other day. So it's always closed. Yeah. And all the windows were open. And you mm-hmm. can see these wonderful curtains. So when these the folks were living there, th- it must have been really nice inside. Wow. What what's what caught my attention though is the number of television antennas on the roof. Yes. And there are so there's two stands that each have at least ten different antennas in different directions wow. and, and a cb radio one on top of that crikey that's aged it uh, yeah so i'm kind of going okay and no one's lived in this for a long time palm trees are long gone mm. it's 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 in need of some tlc a paint job for sure yeah, yeah and apparently what happened is the the grandparents passed away years ago the brothers were unsure what to do with the property so they just let it sit oh, and no. now they're going in and renovating it Wow, okay, yeah. so at least they're doing something with it now. Yeah, but the windows were all open, so I could only imagine there's been water leaks and yeah. That's stuff. interesting, thinking about it, because at my old place, which is 300 yards away from where I live now, there was one villa in the neighbourhood where it was as if it had just been handed over. So they didn't renovate the garden, and even <laughs> the waste pipe yeah. was still exposed in the front yeah. garden, which wow. was amazing. And people lived there. And we were just, the whole neighborhood was just, wh- wh- why? And, you know, this is a, this yeah. is a big five bed, wow. pretty super premium location. And they'd done the zero, absolutely nothing. nothing. And we, we thought it, it had been empty for, for, for a while. And then little, little kind of um, just things like rubbish in the, um, in the wheelie bin. And then one day, there was a car on the driveway and and we were kind of like, oh, people do live there. And then when you look a little bit closer and you can see the inside is furnished and we were like, why would you want to live this way? But you know, that's the people have their own choice, don't they? Yeah. yeah. Inside. And it's probably a, um, you know, a a stuff you to all the Dewa bills of, um, of actually doing something with the garden. And if you're not going to use it, I suppose, then then why would you, well, no, for a really good outlook and to enjoy what you've done. But there we go. So keep your windows covered. That's going to help uh, just with a little bit of stuff. Yeah. Well, the other one is film. You can use oh. the, um, like you have in your car, or many people yeah. have in their car, uh, you can get a film. And these days you can get clear film, mm-hmm. which will have somewhere between kind of 60 and 70% of um, heat rejection. Really? Yeah. I need to think about that. You well, guys install that? No. It's okay. a specialist job without a doubt. And, you thought um, about installing that? You do yeah, screens. We about you it. do screens. Yeah, it's, I know, but it's a very it's, different skill. Yeah, and um, I've seen yeah. your guys work. I'm thinking they could do that work. They probably could. <laughs> they probably could. But if we're going to do something, I want it to be great. I don't mind you testing your skill on my place. <laughs> well, you say that now until we actually do test our skill on your place. But the other the other issue that we tend to find is um, I things like the, that I couldn't accept yeah. are things like a joint that is 
on the oh, um, yeah. that's on the actual window itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah I got gotcha. That really gets through to me. So in which case, the films that I'd be using would need to come in super crazy sizes. Right. Because just for my own kind of OCD, yeah. a customer might say, oh, no, that's uh, fine. And I'd be uh, like, yeah, that's not fine. I'm just not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Simple as that. And we run into those quite frequently. Oh, we had a classic this week. We had one where we are up for a contract with uh, for 27 properties oh. for essential maintenance. Beautiful. And we were literally at the last minute, everything's all under control. And the customer said, oh, there's one more, and it's the boss's property. Mm-hmm. We're like, oh, great, lovely, we'll come take a look at that. So um, we sent out, because um, because we knew that it was going to be kind of an interesting one, yeah. uh, and it's uh, <laughs> you know a, a super premium as well, we um, sent out our, our head tech alongside um, our, our normal essential um, maintenance uh, contracts manager. And it turns out that there's something called a building management system that sits alongside the ACs. Okay, a building management, management system. system. Now, what this is is basically a compu- computer controller. In fact, okay. we've got one directly behind you at the moment. Okay, and what it oh, yeah, is, okay, sure. yeah, what it is is a unique system which has been a custom program to have uh, various screens. And it has a, a central CPU yeah. to basically manage <clears throat> everything integrated. So it integrates the ACs. Uh, AC control, it integrates the lights, it integrates uh, curtains as it's well. It's got timers on it. Yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Excuse me. And now, um, the issue with that from a contractual perspective is if you imagine if that were to have any issues, because it's basically a computer. Oh, no. Who's got the software? Yeah. That was installed, and this one was quite old. Uh-oh. So it was installed, I reckon, probably eight to ten years ago. Oh, dear. Okay. Has it been updated? No. No, no, no. no. And, um, and even if it had been updated, yeah. who's actually got the software? Yeah. Now, I'm contractually signing up to be able to take that on at my liability for 12 months. Yeah. They've had other contractors that have been doing this in recent years, and nobody has brought to their attention that if there is a failure of that system, there is zero that they can do about it. Yeah. Well, I'm not prepared to do that because that's me lying to a customer as far as I'm concerned. So I I wrote a big long email to them yesterday saying, this is the actual scenario that you're dealing with here, which is the only person that potentially could look after that would be number one, the original installer. Number two, they would need to have backdated. So even the PC that it operated from would need to be backdated. Yeah, if it's 10 years old, we're talking legacy at this point. Oh, big time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or thirdly, that there is an update patch that basically gets it from that to something modern. Yeah. And you know what? Because this is pretty much bespoke, they won't have installed many within Dubai, the chances of that are pretty minimal. Yeah. So therefore, for my liability, I'm not going to take this one on because I can't deliver that to the level that I need to uh, to be able to be confident in that What was the response? Project. I don't know yet. I only okay. sent it yesterday. All right. so, but I might. there's a good chance I'll have lost 29 properties oh, over man. there. But none of the other properties have this. No, measure. all standard. All totally standard. Mm. But this was the boss's house. Yeah. Um, but it is the right decision. And I'm not compromising it. It's yeah. simple as that, which is unless people understand and are educated effectively in terms of what they're actually buying and the risks that are associated with it, then how can you, hand on heart, take that on as a, as a job and feel that you yeah, are legitimately yeah. providing that service? Which is another thing to be wary of is if you've got a computer-driven system, yep, and in this case, a nice central computer-driven system, yeah. if you're away and that thing breaks, what, what's, what's the reboot feature? What if there is a classic, what if it just breaks? What if there is a meltdown in the, yep. the CPU, which, you know, hopefully not, but what if that happens? What are you going to do? What's the override? There's one in Dubai that can be worked on that I know of. Uh-huh. And that's actually on all of the fronds on the palm. And uh-huh. the only reason that it, it, is, it can be worked on is because there's a large number of properties on the palm. Right. It's financially viable for there to be suppliers that, that will deal with that as a legacy product. Right. Possibly Nikhil owns the, uh, the group that works on that. No, no they okay. don't actually. But um, it is now a third party. It's not the okay. original supplier uh-huh, who put okay. it all in. It's a third party who's gone, oh, there's a business opportunity here. So yeah. we will support that. Well, thank goodness for that, because it yeah. means that at that point, we as a provider have somebody that is capable of working on that professionally. Yeah. Yeah. Apart from that, you've got a bespoke system, looks great when you first put it in. Yeah. 
Uh, the other, that's, and that's another classic in the Arabian ranches. You've got Pacific Control, who did the original video um, video phones. Oh, uh, yeah, they did the installation. They did the twelve month um, uh, twelve month defects liability period, and then oh, it's about three weeks later they went bust. <laughs> so now they're all there. Not one works. It's um, they're absolutely awful. So, and we're now we're talking 13, 14 years later, yeah. but they were all uh, produced in such a way so that they were countersunk into walls. So at that looks point, beautiful. Yeah, look look beautiful on day one. But the funny thing was, my mother-in-law and father-in-law, as it was in those days, moved into one of these with that control system when it was brand new. They never got it to work. <laughs> not once. Day not one. once did it actually work. <laughs> Pacific Control came back three, four times. Oh, yes, yeah, so we're just waiting on parts, waiting on parts. Next thing you know, defect liability is finished. And, um, you know, three weeks after that, they're done. Oh, man. Yeah. Welcome to Dubai. So technology. Isn't technology. It? Uh, another thing to keep in mind. Let's get back on track here. Oh, sorry. And I don't know. This is always awesome. Keeping ants and cockroaches and stuff ants and roaches yes those are and i'm not saying that people have you know the, the there's a roach infestation but we do have sewage systems and the way the sewage systems work it is possible now and again for one of these critters that lives in those areas and i know this because i pull up the grates every now and then and it's like whoa what is living in there yeah and they can come through the, the trap they can and how that happens is, now and again in Dubai, as you well know, we get, um, well, I call it a pressure change, but in effect, it's just like a surge of wind yeah. that comes through. And um, one yesterday. Whoa. Yeah. And when it does, it can blow out toilets, it can blow out U-bends, yeah. and at that point, they can, they can all get into your property. Mm-hmm. There's no two ways about it. If you're leaving a property on, on its own, that's just a risk you take. There's no yeah. way around it. However, if you have somebody who's coming in, um, assuming that you've got somebody coming in, you wouldn't be isolating the water in the same way. It would be somebody who knows how to turn the water back on and a few easy instructions. And it's not difficult. It really isn't. But uh, in that situation, first thing that I would do is I would start all of the taps and literally all you need is 10 seconds of tap and I would flush every toilet. And yeah. do that as a standard as part of their, uh, and you can do that in ten minutes. I mean, I can do our place in ten minutes, which yeah. is um, is uh, just get the water flowing, get yeah. it all going. Absolutely. And what you're doing is actually filling up those U bends again uh, to make sure that as of that point, uh, you have the required water to stop yeah. the the uh, the U bends in whichever format they they are uh, from being an issue. I always fire a little piff path around the the drain areas yep. when I'm not there. Uh, you know, inside where it. Yes. Where the water goes. Well, the additional is, if you know that you've got a, a history of ants or whatever else, um, mega gel. Never come yeah, mega gel's a great one. Yeah, I know. Well, Lulu supply it, generally. Oh, okay. Uh, the big supplies. It's available in other places, but they, they tend to come in and out of stock a little bit. So I found that Lulu is kind of the most reliable for that. Still struggle to get it online, which is bizarre. Hmm. I don't know why, but um, the main suppliers, you, you seem to struggle with it there. But uh, I've always found it in Lulu. But for some reason, it might be one of those where there's a whole load of competing brands that are yeah. perfectly adequate. <laughs> but it's not something I want to really risk. And yeah. luckily, I've never been in a place where it's been such a major issue that one application of Megagel hasn't solved it permanently, mm. which is kind of quite a... Quite a um, a positive thing for the product, isn't it? I, I usually do a, a sweep around the outside just with a, an insecticide, just, you know, it yeah. sills and things. It doesn't usually rain too much, so it, it sort of, you know, gets to the nooks and crannies and just creates a little bit of a barrier. Nice. I, I kind of think of, you know, when you've been to, you know, Indonesia or places like that, and, you know, every night, every morning, they're, you know, you can't get rid of the bugs. Yeah, of course. They're natural. But, you know, on the sills, just uh, create a little barrier, so... Great idea. Always a good idea. Yeah, without a doubt. Works yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we've got outside doors, garage doors and things. Just keep make sure they're locked up or closed so that people aren't going to get an easy access if you've got those kinds of things. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's a, that's a bit of a no-brainer, isn't it? And yeah. I think it's something that, especially within the Western world, because we're used to crime, even though yeah. we now live here, where there is so little, which is wonderful. That it is still it still it's exists. Still happens, yeah. It so still on that basis, I think we all naturally lock up yeah. um quite effectively. I've got Dylan doing it now. Oh nice. Yeah, it's great. His little job, I grab water and um, when we go up and his job is to go around every door and try and open it. That's the other thing that I've got, which is if you just mess with the lock, <sighs> it doesn't work so well. So I've got him into the process now. Okay. As you know, I'm very process driven. So um yeah, try and open each door. If it opens, lock it. 
then try again. And he does that for the whole house, which is great. Nice. What do you do for pools? What's your thoughts on pool stuff? Well, p- pools is an interesting one because most people, if you've got a pool, is, are, are in one of two camps, which is the, for me, I've got a guy who comes monthly and I just stick doing exactly what we've got okay. already. Because... What, the, he just comes once a month? No, no, he doesn't. He comes oh, once okay. a week. Once a week. Okay. Yeah, once a week. And um, he's great. Really, really good. He's actually a professional diving instructor, believe it or not, to nice. a really high level. And then him and his, his right-hand man do this to kind of fill in the gaps between um, diving teaching. Okay. And um, he's great. Right. Uh, but the other school of thought is those people who manage it themselves. Yeah. Uh, in that situation, if you're managing it, it yourself, um, you probably have your own your own choices. And I wouldn't say I was an expert. If it was me, and this is purely theoretical, I would probably leave the pump on a similar cycle, so at least I'm getting some filtration, and I would shock it beforehand with a um, a whole bunch of tablets, and then when I come back, I'm pretty sure I need to <laughs> shock it again uh, to really get that uh, that water to, uh, back to what it needed to be. Yeah. But the one thing you don't want to do is to come back and see something that's bright green. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Keep so overdo that. it beforehand, and then. I think you probably need some measurement afterwards as well. Because saying that, isn't it the... Uh, in fact, you know more about this than I do with the jacuzzi. So isn't it the case that um, uh, the sun actually reduces the uh, the concentrations yeah, of chlorine and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, absolutely. So if you shock it, I wonder how long that would last for? I don't know. I keep mine covered, so it's... Mm, uh, that's a good point. But, uh, yeah, that, that would really depend on the exposure. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I have friends who um, are very much uh, of the um, kind of DIY persuasion when it comes to their pools. And um, every one of them at some point has hit the green pool issue <sighs> and not been able to get it back. Really? So then at that point, they've kind of realized, okay, I'm kind of out of my league here. And it's time to bring in the professionals. That's, that's an algicide issue. That's when you need to make sure mm. that you've... you've I, I think, and I'm just thinking of closing down your pool... At home, because you call, you know, lots of it would be like in the UK, you get lots of yeah. folks who close down pools. So shock it. If I think if I was going away, I'd shock it. I'd make sure I've got the algae side in it, yeah. but not too much because then it gets foamy. Mm. But you know, make sure that that's up and keep the pump going. Yes, and I guess in, in this day and age, we've got chlorine dispensers and things. So mm. if you, you know, you could easily have one of those put in. Yeah, and the, so it, it's just like another. It's it's a dispenser that's it's in the line. Water's going through it, yeah. so you can make sure that you've got two, three, four pucks in there, and water is going to go through, and it's going to keep the thing chlorinated. So cool. If you're away, expensive. I don't think so. Blimey. Yeah, that's a clever system, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I maybe that's a that's a better bet than um, the amount that I pay every month for for this guy. But then again, that doesn't yeah. do the cleaning bit. That's does it. it. I mean, are you up for the vacuuming and the sweeping? And no. he, yeah, and he's going to make sure the water's okay and do that once a week, you know, adjustment of yeah. chemicals. And this is what they do. Yeah, I'm sticking with Tom thinking so, about it. Yeah, so if you're not so familiar with doing that, it's easy, you know, oh, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And then next thing you know, you've got your chemicals out of whack. And as soon as you start playing the, the teeter-totter of pH up and pH down and you keep throwing in some soda ash and some acid and ash and acid you're done yeah <laughs> you're done well it's interesting as well because this 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 is also the same issue that we talked about time and time again about being real, realistic about your own time yes and, and your ability it's yes <laughs> yes so exactly you're right and so it, it really is this is one of those things which sounds like way above the level unless you yeah. really are prepared to invest time in it as a little project yeah what, what do you do for lights do you put timers on and all that kind of i mean i know you've got your your mother-in-law staying over yeah but what do you think about timers on lights and stuff, or does it really matter? If I was living somewhere where there was more crime, without a doubt, I wouldn't even think about it. Yeah. <clears throat> Here, I don't think about it because I just don't do it. Yeah. We I usually leave an outside light it. on. We leave an outside light on, but I'm not sure why we do that. I mean, well, these days, with um, LED lights, in effect, you could be running an entire garden yeah. off um, you know, 10 watts. Yeah. In which case, it's no big deal <laughs> leaving it on the whole time, which is wonderful, isn't it? You think yeah. about that. Which was, I mean, my my property before last, which was running off incandescence, and I was running at uh, like 650 watts. And now for the same area, I'm running off, what, 15? Yeah. It's nuts, isn't it? Absolutely incredible. 
so security wise, what what I do is is I've got a, a guy who will come and water when I'm not when I'm not there. Yeah. But I do all my own yard work. Yes, you do. throughout the year. Mm. So I know all the garden guys because they see me trimming, pruning, yeah. carrying. Like I'm doing it all. And so the guys who come and water for me are in the neighborhood, know all the guys as well. Yes. So, you know, we're friends. And so these guys, are, lovely. they're all keeping an eye out as well. You know what oh, I mean? That's like, really cool. Yeah, yeah. Because they obviously talk. And I mean, to the point that the other, the other night, I, I ended up taking the dog out for a walk rather late. Mm. And the garden guy goes, oh, you're late tonight. Wow. <laughs> yeah, because they, they're going, where is he? Yeah. That's amazing. They got me down on time. It's like, I'm going, yeah. I'm like under surveillance here. Well, you know, there, that is one of the things, isn't it? When you, when you walk a dog, it's amazing how that promotes discussion <laughs> with your neighbours. Yeah. Because well, we've got a great little crew of people, and there's yeah. probably about 15, 20 of us. Yeah. And whether we're kind of slightly early or slightly late, you'll always see somebody else from the crew uh, yeah. else on the wall. Yeah. Uh, and it, it does make it a lot more enjoyable. Yeah. I had a, a not an incident, but a, a reminder, because one of our dog our dog is a rescue, mm. and start of the pandemic was when he was abandoned and he's a big dog. He's he you know, 53 kgs. 53 but, now. Yeah. He's down Jeez. a little bit. So he's, but he's, he's gotten stronger. He's, wow. But he's, he's a, he's a big, he's a big boy. Yeah. And I think when he was abandoned, he lived for a while at a guard shack. Oh man. And he's a big boy. And yeah. so I was talking with one of the gardeners just, you know, hey, hello, how's it going? And, and I was actually trying to find out about it, one of the other gardeners, how his health was, because I haven't seen him around, and I know he okay. went back to India. Of course, we couldn't communicate, so I've got to go knock on a door and ask someone else. Yeah. But he had a broomstick in his hand and came towards me while the dog went wild. And I'm going, Blimey. guess he was uh, po- poked and prodded with broomsticks oh, man. living at this guard shack in Ras oh, for a man. while before he got sent to the, the rescue center. So, because clearly, like there's, you know, he... It, he knows the guy. He sees the guy, but he had the stick in his hand. Mm, such not a lovely happy. dog, isn't yeah, he? Not happy. And he's, you know, he's pulling. At that yeah. point. I'm just going, hey, hey, hey. Yeah. <laughs> he's I got bet. a loud bark. Oh, man. <laughs> so this guy, he's running. Like, he just took one look and he just, he, he beelined it, you know, <laughs> into where he was going. Door closed. So I'm not sticking around. No. <laughs> I said, don't worry, don't worry. He's like, <laughs> worried, worried. <laughs> worried. <laughs> oh, bless him. <laughs> So lights Suffering. and those kind of things, uh, maybe, maybe not. Yeah, okay. I think it depends where, where, depends. where you're coming from. Yeah. And again, uh, everybody has slightly different priorities, don't they? Yeah. Uh, obviously, you know, we're in a lucky situation. We've got somebody there. If you're in a neighborhood where you don't feel as confident as you, you are within yours or, or I am within mine, then yeah, why not? It's, yeah. Uh, and again, if you've got low energy light bulbs, it's not a major cost for you. Yeah. Uh, what do you do about the gas? I mean, again, you've got someone who sticks in. What do you think about turning off gas tanks? I know it's very, very easy to do. It is. It's just a knob. So, yeah. So on Done. the regulator itself, I mean, yeah. most people will know, but on the regulator yeah. itself, uh, there is always a little lever to be able to isolate yeah. it. Uh, it makes sense. But then the other side of it is it, the, we're talking quite remote extremes of chance that it will fail at that particular yeah. point. It's under no more stress than it is... Um, during the rest of the time yeah. and i don't know about you but i've never had a failure no I, the only thing is years ago and this is like 20 years ago yeah i had a, a neighbor who there must have been a leak in the hose or something a slow leak mm. and they didn't turn off the regulator they went away came back they had no gas they're going oh what's going on here there's no gas right and i'm going yeah i think it's just you know, someone, someone's draining my tank. It's like, you know, it's, you know, it's, and I was like, well, just turn the tank off. You don't have a problem if you've got, yeah. you know, some of these hoses can get pretty old and brittle. So, yeah, I don't know. Okay, so maybe that's a, that's a good point. So normally I would kind of give a hose three to four years maximum. Yeah. And again, is it exposed outside or is the hose either uh, within a box out right. when it's outside? And secondly, within your home. And then the rest should be a copper, a copper pipe. Yeah. If your setup is different to that, then yeah, yeah. maybe you need Mine's to think just the rubber that. hose. For a rubber hose comes through the wall, tanks there, boom, exposed. Right. So okay. I always turn off. Yeah, I bet. In that situation, I would too. To be fair, another thing: when you're if you're at the stage of um, of turning it off, why not just give that hose a quick expe- uh, inspection that as well? Too. Yeah. So when you're in, uh, inspecting the hose, you need to bend it to see whether or not a it's brittle, and secondly, if it's brittle, change it 
quickly. Secondly, if there are any cracks that you can visibly see in any location on that hose, it's time to change it. Yeah. So uh, it gives you a chance at that point to to schedule that in, which is a good idea. Yeah. And if you're if you're you know not inclined to do that, the guys who deliver gas, they'll do it. Of course they will. Yeah. <laughs> They've yeah. got all the hoses with them. They got everything with them. Yeah. And it's not expensive at all. No. You know, you got to work hard to break fifty dirhams for that. Yeah. You know, head to Ace, head to SpeedX. They've got it. Yeah, got yeah, it absolutely. Uh, pressure washers on sale again, by the way. Really? <laughs> yeah, Which so, one? I don't, some name I've never heard of. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> Loving mine. Mind you, I had to buy an O-ring for it. Oh, yeah. It was um, it was leaking through um, uh, through the connection to the wand. Okay. And um, so I looked online, and there were eighty different suppliers on eBay. <laughs> Gee, yeah, I know. In the end, two dollars cost me more in shipping than it did in the uh, for the actual O rings. And obviously, if you, there's no point just buying one O ring in that no, no. situation, is there? You got to buy a half dozen. Well, I thought ten was a round number because <laughs> they were that cheap anyway. I'm like, you're never going to go through ten, are you? Yeah, I know, but I've got spares now. Yeah, you I've never got know. Spares, you never yeah. know. You never know. So on that basis, and I, I still haven't actually used it since, which is ridiculous. <laughs> I've kind of retired for the summer. <laughs> I tried it once, and I was like, gee whiz, this is hard going. And, and in our, because we're in a development as such, and it's not the quietest of pressure washers because it's an absolute beast. So I don't really want to wake people up, but then you've got that midpoint. What's the reasonable time on a Sunday morning to start using your pressure washer? 8 a.m. Right, but the problem at 8 a.m. is it's already really yeah. hot. Yeah. So then it becomes a little bit too too much of a pain, and I've got no chance of getting the kids involved at that point. Mm. So I kind of um, have yeah. been using a, somebody else <laughs> in a very expat way to clean my cars. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah. I provide water, <laughs> plenty of water. Everybody gets one and a half litres, so we look after them, kind of. Yeah. Any, anything else? Anything else we need to think about for getting our place ready if we're going to be away for a bit? Anything come to mind? We've we've hit. I think we've hit. Pretty we've much hit everything. Yeah. We've really. Yeah. I mean, there's the obvious ones about leaks around doors and yeah. all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And um, you know, under the front door is a classic because yeah. you don't want to come back to a, a sunstorm inside your home. Yeah. But you'd know about that already. Yeah. To be fair, I got a lot of so, that stuff already. You know, so. if that's the if that's the case. Um, one other little um, tip on that, if you have uh, the bottom of a door, which is uh, particularly bad and you haven't got round to it until the night before you go <laughs> away, noodles, if you, huh? you know, oh, the, yeah, the yeah, swimming pool noodles, pool noodles. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so chop those, um, you can try in half or if you, if it's still too big into a quarter, kick it under a door and it seals absolutely brilliantly. There you go. So uh, that is just a cheap fix. Uh, hopefully your kids won't be crying at that moment. Um, but uh, you know, our, kids, our kids and noodles are just ridiculous. No, Daddy, I'm having the green one. <laughs> oh, come on, baby. I only need to chop it up and put it under the door. <laughs> <laughs> so the moral of this whole story of this whole podcast is in advance you want to be doing an assessment checking things out don't leave things till the last moment right yes. before you're getting ready to walk out the door oh i should have done this oh i'm going to do that it's like you're you're, you're ready to go you you shouldn't be doing this it's packing and and focusing on the journey that you should be doing right at that last minute not yeah. oh my goodness i've missed a whole bunch of things in the house yeah. so yeah plan the week before you know give yourself yeah. some time in case it's something that is defective think common sense yeah you need time there so that you yeah. can get somebody in to fix it so you can go away with a clear head knowing that your property is going to be fine yeah there we go it's that simple colin thomas we've done it once again the we will fix it podcast has sorted the world and their travel needs i'm excited we're ready to travel <laughs> Enjoy, people. <laughs> Happy summer. Talk to you again soon, Colin. And if you want to listen to a whole bunch more of what we've been doing, go down, scroll through the podcast, give us a search. It's the We Will Fix It podcast right here on Potaholics. My name's James Pikeway. That was Colin. Talk to you again soon.